So let's talk raw durability, shall we? What's going on, everybody? It's Jay the Gray here, and welcome back to another rant, I guess you could say. It seems like you guys enjoyed the previous one. Uh, the idea was off the fly, and that scaling was off the cuff, and so is this one here today. By the way, make sure to hit the like button if you enjoy. If this gets to 30 likes, I'll do another one. And also make sure to let me know who you would like me to rant about next and scale up next. Uh, your support is greatly appreciated. But let's talk Kakuzu, right? Kakuzu has become a sort of meme in the anime community and more specifically in the Naruto community, right? Kakuzu is a very interesting character, um, part of the Akatsuki, and that's not to be disrespected or undermined, right? But however, clearly, as I'm sure many of you are aware, Kakuzu is greatly highballed a lot of the time in the community. And I'm going to argue why that's usually in bad faith and in a intuitively dishonest manner. So where does Kakuzu scale? Kakuzu has his most thorough showing against Kakashi and company, right? When Shikamaru, Ino, and Choji show up to battle him and heat on along with Kakashi. That is when he has his best display of abilities and power. Now, in that altercation, we see him contend with base sharing on Kakashi quite well. He is able to swap hands with him, has a Taijutsu exchange where he's able to damage him and even press him to quite a high degree, right? They seem relative to quite an extent, right? They seem quite relative. Then towards the end of that altercation, Naruto shows up, right? After Kakuzu has had some fatigue kick in, right? To be quite fair due to the relativity of him and Kakashi. And at the end, he is speed blitzed by Naruto. Now, many argue that wasn't a speed blitz. He was caught off guard. But in manga, when there is an exclamation point being displayed, you know, above an individual's head prior to an attack, that indicates a speed blitz is taking place, right? That is why, unfortunately, as much as I hate to say it, Sakura blitzed Kaguya, right? Because prior to her punch, there is an exclamation point above her head as well, right? So she was speed blitzed as well. All right, so what does that indicate? It indicates that that iteration of Naruto, right, with a slight QB amp, is arbitrarily relative to, to Kakuzu as well. You could argue that's a fatigue Kakuzu, that's fair. However, he is arbitrarily relative to this individual to be able to dispose of him in the end, right? Regardless of the parameters behind th this altercation, he is arbitrarily relative. Kakashi and Naruto are arbitrarily relative to Kakuzu in speed and most likely in caliber. More specifically Kakashi, right? Because he had a more thorough altercation and a more drawn out altercation with Kakuzu. So that is around the level that Kakuzu is at. Now to debunk some very common poor propositions that are presented by the high ballers of Kakuzu, this is what I'll say. Now I'm going to debunk some of the most common highballing arguments that are used for Kakuzu. Right, the first one is the Yugito argument. Right, the the argument that Yugito is relative to KCM Naruto, and because Kakuzu was able to survive an altercation with her, he is relative as well, and hence he is arbitrarily relative to KCM Naruto. Firstly, in the manga specifically, he doesn't really do much of anything. Right, it shows him getting stopped by Yugito. Right? He survives that attack, I'll give you that. He survives it. And then it shows Yugito being cr sort of crucified after what seemed to be the ritual of Hidon being implemented upon her. Right, So that displays that at best, Hidon and Kakuzu together are relative to Yugito. That's what it displays at best. Right, It doesn't display even that Kakuzu's relative individually to Yugito. Now, despite whether you think he is or isn't individually, that doesn't matter anyway. And here's why. The Yukito that has an altercation with Keisei Mo Naruto is one, being aided by five other Jinchiriki, and two, is being amped by Dojutsu as specified specifically and stated blatantly in that altercation by Yuki, right? It's also displayed visually by the fact that you could see the Renegon and Sharingan upon of each of the eyes of the Jinchuriki respectively, including Yugito. Right, so to claim 
that regular Yu Gi Toh without an amp is relative to Casey Monaruto is blatantly incorrect. And to compare that Yu Gi Toh to the Yu Gi Toh that fought Kakuzu and Hidon is a blatant false equivalency, which I just substantiated. And again, it's due to the Dojutsu amp and due to the fact that there are five other Jinchuriki aiding her in combating Naruto and Killer B, respectively, right? So that proposition is extremely, extremely fallacious and a blatant false equivalency. It's a blatant false equivalency, and it's very easily debunkable, I might add. It's actually a very common proposition I see thrown around. However, again, that premise is very easily debunkable. So there's that piece of empirical evidence out of the way. Now, the second piece is that Kakazu, because he was alongside Itachi as an Edo, when they were heading towards battle, he is relative in speed to Itachi. Now, to debunk that poor proposition or premise, I could simply prove it via contradiction. Now, if you just simply look at his long, drawn-out battle with Kakashi and Naruto, it is very clear that in combat, he does not display levels of speed remotely comparable to Itachi. Not remotely comparable. Now, if we look at Edo Itachi, right, his performance is vastly superior to Kakuzu's against uh, Naruto and Kakashi and company, right? Edo Itachi blatantly shows scaling to Casey and Naruto, to Nagato, and to Killer B. He reacts to a simultaneous attack from Killer B and Naruto, and then he goes on to blitz Nagato and save Killer B and Naruto from soul extraction, respectively, right? That's his levels of speed. He is in that caliber of speed, in that rare air of speed. While conversely, again, like I said, Kakuzu struggles with Kakashi and Naruto. He struggles to react to them and shows relativity to them. And then as an Edo, we see him lose to the more fodder ninja uh, company with Ten Ten and uh, all those individuals, Darwi and company, right? Which contain, again, fodder ninja. They're not re even remotely comparable to Naruto and Nagato and Killer B. Not even remotely comparable. It's truly preposterous that that's a proposition that is actually constructed to try and argue Kakuzu's level of caliber and speed. Truly preposterous. Truly preposterous. Now, to add on top of that, right, I already gave substantiation for that. There are several panels showing all sorts of Edo uh, shinobi running alongside each other to battle. Plenty of them. From Seven Swordsmen of the Mist to Akatsuki to other ones, other legendary shinobi, running alongside each other. So are we going to imply that all these Edo, all these Edo shinobi are relative to each other? I think that's blatantly, intuitively dishonest. Truly. So those two propositions, right? The, the Yugi Tea argument and the uh, Kakuzu and Itachi running alongside proposition are the most common ones I see used. But they are truly easily debunkable. The, the debunks I just presented are not S-tier debunks. They're very, very, very easily constructible premises and debunks, to be quite honest. Right, very, very easily. Um, it's quite comical to me that people have to go out of their way to point out common sense. And what that indicates to me is true disingenuity in true intuitive dishonesty. That's what it points out to me. Right? Because Kakazu does not scale remotely to the levels that some people like to scale them to. It's truly, truly preposterous to me. The arguments are. They're truly preposterous. Now, to be fair, Kakazu is a powerful individual. He is an Akatsuki member. And a prerequisite to being an Akatsuki member is the capability of capturing Bijou. He's not weak by any means. He's an Akatsuki member, arguably the most prestigious group of shinobi as far as antagonists are concerned in all of Shippuden, up until the Warwick, of course. You know, so, he's certainly not weak. But to make the claim that he's Casey and what Naruto level, it's truly preposterous. And to, make, and to even make these claims, even have a remote sort, even some remote sort of foundation, you have to truly pedantically analyze the narrative, and you have to Essentially, like I said, kind of like with the Toborama uh, rant, extract small snippets and small substratas of data from the entire, an entire set of empirical data in the narrative 
to try and construct this intuitively dishonest narrative that Kakuzu is at this rare is in this rare air of power. But yeah, folks, I think that's that's all I have for Kakuzu. Um, again, it's even comical that he's an individual that is uh, talked about, debated for, especially in in, in such high rare air. It, it's truly preposterous. Now the Toborama one makes some sort of sense. Even that one is kind of comical. But this one is just preposterous, right? The the, the, the Kakuzu argument that still brews in the Naruto fandom is truly preposterous to me. It, it truly, it has to stem from 99.9% .9 intuitive dishonesty. The Toborama one, it makes a little bit more sense, a little bit more. The, the, the Jubito argument thing, that makes a little bit more sense than the Kakuzu one. The Kakuzu one, just, there's no merit to it whatsoever. Observably, there's zero. Zero. Basically, the only debatable one where there's a admittedly theoretical possibility of merit is the Kakuzu and Itachi uh, event where they're running alongside each other. Is there a theoretical possibility that they're equivalent in speed or relative? Sure. But what's the likelihood and the probability of it? Near zero. Near zero. Truly. Truly near zero. And besides that, there's literally no observable evidence. So via Sagan's standard, which is a philosophical razor, it can simply be dismissed right? without extraordinary evidence. An extraordinary claim can be simply disregarded. S that is definitely the case for the Kakuzu KCM1 scaling. But yeah, folks, that, that's my scaling. That's all I really have for you folks. Um, like I said, uh, the, the, the rant sort of concept came out of nowhere. Um, I decided to do it one day at, on the fly with the Toborama video. It seemed to do well. It seemed you guys enjoyed it. And it seemed to stir up some controversy. I don't mind that. You know, in good faith. You know, all in good fun and good faith. You know, no ill will towards any group of people. I just like uh, contending with arguments I don't agree with. You know, that's essentially the, the premise for the concept of this kind of video. Um, so make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed um, and again, if you get if we get this one to 30 likes like we did the last one, I'll do another one. And you guys let me know of a character to rant on. I, I kind of want to stick to characters that stir up some controversy, stir up some conversation more than anything. You know, Toborama is a great one. Kakuzu, I know, is a great one in the community. Um, but if you guys have any other characters that you see are deemed worthy to talk about due to the controversy, due to the contentiousness, or even a topic, uh, let me know. Um, of course, I want to make original content with you know, uh, sources and panels and well-edited uh, visuals. But this will be kind of like a, a pseudo-informative video I do every once in a while because I do enjoy these. And the last one did, did seem to do pretty well. So, again, let me know. Leave a like. And I'll catch you in the next video, folks. This is Jay the Great signing out. Peace.